Growing up in Burundi in the 1990s, Mirei Kamariza saw people dying from tuberculosis. That childhood experience drove her to become a scientist. That has been a core motivation for the work that I do in studying infectious diseases, developing diagnostics that can be implemented in places like my home country of Burundi where we can hopefully eradicate the diseases similar to how we have done in the global north. Kamariza is now a molecular bioengineer at the University of California, Los Angeles. She came up with a simple yet effective test to detect the disease that kills more than a million people per year worldwide. This sugary powder mixed with water and the patient's phlegm or blood will detect tuberculosis bacteria within hours. The genesis of this whole project was the, the concept of taking something that, that bacteria love to ingest, the sugar in this case, and then putting a biosensor on it and then seeing if that works, and it did work. That was great. Existing TB tests have drawbacks. They can take weeks, like a culture test, can register false results like a smear test, or are expensive, like a molecular test, says UCLA Life Sciences Dean Tracy Johnson. She's focused on making that dye more specific and brighter so that even very common microscopes that are available in places like field clinics in Uganda, where can even be detected in those circumstances. And that's really a game changer. Kamariza says her test shows if the bacteria are alive or dead, which helps to determine if a person is contagious. And it quickly detects if a patient is responding to treatment. And it will be inexpensive. The powder that we make is very cheap to make, especially when you make it on a grand scale it's going to be less than one dollar a test. But first it has to pass a clinical trial planned in Uganda to see how well it works in the real world. If it passes, Kamariza says, the test would serve not only low-income countries around the world, but also California, where the state has seen a rise of TB cases in the last year. Jenya Dulo, VOA News, Los Angeles.